Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Collectible Conversations. I think it's episode, like, 20. Um, I don't think we need to keep count anymore. <laughs> not anymore, because, well, it's been two weeks since we've done one of these. Um, this is the rebooted version with... Season 2. Edison, Menace, Isle Collectibles. Episode 1, <laughs> Season 2. Uh, I feel better. <laughs> we, uh... Yeah. Um, I'm back from Dubai. Um, Welcome back. Edison, you're back from me being back from Dubai because you didn't feel yeah. it. And same with you, Sean. Um, <laughs> what, what's going on? I was like, back from the room over there. <laughs> like, I, <know. laughs> um, I didn't know I left. When you were gone, Radar, me and Sean just waited. We did nothing. Yep. We went into hibernation yep. and we didn't, we didn't have what content. We, we didn't talk to each other. We just had to wait. Well, that's that's one thing I want to bring up here first is why why we haven't been pumping out collectible conversations every week like we said we would. And that's because we have other things going on. <laughs> We're killing it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that you know, we Sean and I started this thing uh, because we simply just wanted to start making videos together. And there was we also saw an opportunity to help each other grow and 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 build a uh, uh a little bit of a, a fan base, get our Discord going, uh, just get us jump started. I mean, you had just started YouTube again when we started our collectible conversation. I was honest, I, I was looking for another form of podcast. I, I wanted to have a co host and do something weekly with somebody. And um, honestly, like uh, this, this podcast has been a reason why I think we've we grew so fast and got some new opportunities. And now those opportunities are, are, taking over priorities. So uh, obviously that's just kind of how the world works. We're not going to stop doing this completely. Maybe eventually, uh, eventually, of course, but nah, I um, like doing it. I, yeah. We both you're, like you're doing it. It'll, they'll come out hopefully weekly, but mo most, most likely randomly. Cause I'm going to LA for two weeks again. So who knows if I'll end up <laughs> being able to record with you guys or not, but I'm sure we'll just get at least, out, Sean. at least one episode. But I, I think that's kind of like the bigger message is, the, the whole point of this and what made this good and is good is that we're doing it for the fun of it, right? Like, if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, we just like talking to each other and we thought, hey, maybe other people would like to share in our conversations. And so feeling like we, like, you know, I think it took us about, what, two months to realize, like, doing it twice a week with everything else we were doing was not feasible to where the conversations were feeling more forced than what they were, like, we actually like want to sit down and do this. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you being gone made me like miss having our chats. Right. And like bringing Edison in and we had brought Edison in and like had a really good talk and then like just hadn't done one of these to where all of us, I think all three of us were like the second you got back, like we want to film one, like, mm -hmm. you know, just to talk a lot's happened. And that's what this whole thing's about. It's just like, you know, three dudes that like to chat Pokemon talking about Pokemon and doing it for fun. And so I personally like like that just being kind of how it stays and not forcing it and they happen when they do. And I think that is one will probably lead to more frequency than if we did the other got burnout and just quit doing it, but also will probably lead to like the best discussions and best engagement, which is what's best for you. You know, the viewer is to get the best from us. So, yeah, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, life uh, takes us places. I mean, I, I took on a new job. Uh, I haven't announced that yet. Pokemon Radar did it, but John John took a new job in, in the Pokemon world. So uh, a lot of my focus is going to be going there, but I'll hopefully still be able to put out enough content you know, throughout the weeks and, and uh, continue doing this. So um, I'm excited, man. world is, is, is uh, we're just in a great place right now. At least I am. I don't know about everyone else, but I'm in a great place. I'm happy. So it's uh it's been fun. But um what about you, Edison? What do you got going on? I just saw Sean's face when you said I'm in a good place, I'm happy, and then me and Sean both kinda like frown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I right. like I'm happy and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm all right. Y you and Sean seem to have much more exciting lives than me. You're like talking about, you know, the connections you've made and how you're growing and I'm just kinda sat at home. Went to class online and done Pokemon here and there. Got some returns back, but like, you know. but you're Quite still in frankly, school. Like, 
that's always yeah. going to be a limiting factor for you and until you're done with it because if you start trying to prioritize these other things and making connections and building a business and building a brand and all that stuff even if those are your goals now you're going to be taking away part of your focus from school which i'm sure you're already aware of this and like yeah. then both of those things suffer because you're not like giving each one of them the attention you should and so like doing what you're doing now is the smart thing i like get the school thing done and ironed out and figured out and then once the you finished and got your degree like the world's your oyster then you could do whatever you want to do but give it the attention it deserves yeah remember when i was uh, planning to get my mba <laughs> that didn't happen you, yeah you still can. do you remember oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I still can but yeah i completely shifted all of my focus into pokemon instead dropped that idea and I, I i got lucky i guess i mean put in all the work and this past six months has been like just weird i mean dubai and aoki's house i mean like, you got lucky in some regards with just like certain things lining up and stuff, but you worked hard. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that kind of like diminished it, like to say like, oh, I got lucky. Like, no, you made it. You made a very strategic choice of I'm going to do this thing over this thing. Mm -hmm. And you put in effort to like making that happen. And I you was know, ready. Making I was those connections. Yeah, I, I made myself ready for those opportunities. Those lucky yeah, opportunities. Exactly. Right? You put yourself in a position to capitalize when they came up. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's something that. It's funny that you mentioned that you don't think your life is so exciting right now. And, and you know, it's, it's just a simple fact that all three of us are really in just different situations, different points in our lives of what we are yeah. doing, what we should be doing, can be doing, whatever. And that's something I want to touch on briefly. I know, I know we, we've beat this with a dead horse on YouTube of all the this negativity, positivity conversation with the world of Pokemon and um you know, that's I, I did my my podcast with Gary and we talked about the caribou video and everyone's talking about the caribou video. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's just one I'm thing so that <laughs> you're so angry. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I told I told Sean I wanted to be one of the people she called out because I wanted uh, more <laughs> engagement on my channel. <laughs> hey, you were you were in my end credit sequence. I don't know if you saw my video, but you were in it. I didn't. I didn't watch it yet. Now I feel bad. He did I'll say, watch it right yeah. Now as we discuss it. yeah, he did say he was going to watch it after this shot. So, yeah, no, I'm this. just giving him a hard time. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just fun to pick on Edison. <laughs> I don't know. I... <laughs> well, that's a nice person. That's why we brought him on so we have someone else to pick up. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just to, to me, it's, it's, uh, people need to, to open their eyes and understand the, like we, I just said, the different situations that everyone is in, we're not all walking the same path and doing the same thing at the exact moment. We're all going through something different. So there's, there's truly no right or wrong position to be in in this time, in this conversation. Um, you know, the, the, there were the same conversations four years ago when this wasn't as big as it is. You know, with Pokemon Go came out, there was the same, same talks of, of not being able to get Pokemon cards or price is going too high i can't afford it anymore all that stuff um and blame going ever which way like that we just gotta stop the hate you know and realize that we're all different and we all do different things to get to different points in our lives and that all works at least in my mind i don't know again i i'm right in my head but wrong to clearly a lot of people because my, my video with gary got plenty of dislikes um so i just uh People got to relax. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, I pretty much said what I have to say on the topic in my video, not to like shamelessly plug that, but like, if you want to know my thoughts, just go watch it. Like yeah. I, you know, I, I really laid out, but, and this is something I was kind of like iterating to you guys before this is one of the messages that I sent, like in my video is like, even if you're not in the situation that some other people are that you can show empathy right that like you can be empathetic that you know somebody else's circumstances are different than your own you know again i can relate to being a player and if boxes weren't 90 bucks i could not buy them like that was just i was in college and money that was the situation i was in and so like some people just have different situations and to show empathy but kind of on your point of negativity it, it's and maybe this is just like culture in the world today i don't know but like you know i'm the one preaching like to be empathetic like championing the voice of like these people and yet you know i post a video today where i thought like i was very proud of my video right 
and the video has been up for 12 seconds, has three views on it, and has 23 downvotes, right? <laughs> Which, like, is more downvotes than I get, like, on any video, right? Like, it's hard to be empathetic when you feel like you're being attacked all the time, mm -hmm. right? And I've noticed that, like, so far, we've, like, we've almost seen the, the progression of, like, Caribou from hero to, like, villain in some regards, right? Like, she went from, like, here's her message, people championed it, to now that that fad's over, like, now the other people are starting to speak out that are on the other side, and now, like, making her out to be the villain, which I'm not sure is fair either. And it's, it's like, one of those situations where, like, everyone just wants to attack each other instead of, like, have a conversation. And, you know, it goes back to, like, the start of that video where, and this is one of the points I wish I would have talked about in the video but didn't, is where, you know, people were looking for validation for how they felt, but now we're seeing the other side of that where people are like combating that validation and like, well, you shouldn't feel that way because, and we're like, again, I think as a community, we're like struggling to figure out how to productively have a conversation about this when people have very differing views to like almost find a middle ground. Like I, it's almost like neither side's willing to compromise to any kind of a middle ground on like why these things are the way they are. And it's such a big topic and there's so many different things that go into it that nobody's ever going to fully agree with anyone, right? Like I would say Jake with Pokenomics and I probably have similar stances and him and I were talking today and he was pretty much like, you know, like I 80% agree with your video, which like to me is like a high number, right? Like a topic that expands that many things I don't expect to like 100% anyone on, right? Mm -hmm. Like Radar, you and I have talked about this a bunch. And I would say we're like 60% agree on Probably, like things. Yeah. And that's just different perspectives, different like, but the moral is just like, we've got to have a conversation. And by that, I mean a conversation, not a like you against me, like we're fighting it out. Like, and part of that whole thing is like, if somebody makes content you, you don't like or don't want, you don't necessarily like have to attack them for it. You can just ignore it. And like, that like that kind of thing like plays itself out because you're not going to win the other side over to your side if you're attacking them right you're just going to make them put up a defense or an offense and you know 23 down votes is not going to stop me from being empathetic towards a section of the community because like a few people you know don't get that concept but like it's a bigger point is that like that in like larger numbers can be really damaging to the overall like constructiveness of the conversation yeah it's all political i hate politics stupid yeah i just want to get that out there because i'm salty about it and it happened like eight minutes before we started this video <laughs> yeah so. <laughs> no it's it's fresh on the mind yeah it's it's, yeah. it's interesting because like the the one thing that i like about this is hopefully I, I mean both sides are being listened to right now and i just hope that it gets some people motivated to figure it out, fix it for themselves instead of continuing mm -hmm. to sit on the keyboard and complain about it. Um, you know, there's the side, there's, I guess it's really separated between the money side and the, I can't get Pokemon card side. Right. And they can help each other yeah. out. You know, the, the, the money side of it can help teach people how to work the business of Pokemon to help them get what they want. It can help them, with information of where to get things that they might not know or be aware of that is everything is public just about like, you know, there's conversations of things being gate kept or, or within inner circles when it's really just all public information. Um, we just talk about it more and we talk about the right things about, you know, within that certain, I guess, whole of, of information. Um, and then, you know, the understanding the demand side of the people that, want to get certain things that they can't get that helps us understand what to get out there what the you know because people sit on stuff that they don't even know about and they could put it out there available for people that that want it and well and and that's like that idea right there is my frustration right because like today the people that downvoted that video and were frustrated are like they're attacking me for a very clear reason like they mm -hmm. don't like the message of like talking about market content but they clearly didn't watch the video, right? Mm -hmm. That whole video is constructed to like, hey, this is how you can like spot opportunities in the market, whether you're a collector or an investor or a flip, like that these things exist. Like what I talked about, the mega Charizard in that video, 
that had sat there for like five years in that same stagnant market position. Like anyone could have come along. And if they recognize that, even if they were just a collector, could have bought that card, mm -hmm. right? They could have bought that one card and got it in their collection before it, you know, 6x its value in a month. And teaching people like the whole point of that video was not, I made stonks on Charizard. It was, this is how I went through that process, you know, and like trying to like educate. But I think even then they see it as like, you're educating the scalper, you're educating the flipper. But I, I think my counterpoint to that is a lot of people right now want like regulation almost, <laughs> you know, they see like targets putting up like limits on product and they want Pokemon to step in with distributor and like all this stuff. But the problem is, and people never want to hear this, but scalpers are some of the most dedicated like people when it comes to making money. The yeah. more regulations and barricades you put into actually obtaining product, the more you're actually aiding them because they will still figure out the loopholes. They'll figure out how to system. Yeah. And now you're just making it harder for you and your like minded peers that want to just like collect and have it obtainable to actually get it. Because they yeah. will they will take the time to learn how to game yeah. whatever new rules and regulations are put in place and the average person will not. And so then they will just make it harder for themselves to get it and easier for the scalpers to get it. This has played out in like the sneaker industry, the clothing industry, like it has yeah. played out in crypto, like all of these different things. And people like keep championing it on in this hobby. And it like you'll get what you ask for, but it's not gonna be what you really wanted it to be. And like that's my fear of like where we're headed is that that's going to be the, the next like point. And I'm, that's why I'm like so active in this discussion, even though I kind of don't want to be is because I don't want the people to champion for something that's actually going to hurt them long-term because they don't understand see the, the long-term ramifications of it. And I see that being like very well possible being one of the solutions suggested, right. Is like, making enough of an outcry that like pokemon starts to like step in and like do these things because all you're gonna do is see a lot more like behind the scenes games and stuff like that start to get played that completely cuts the average person out then yeah what were you gonna say edison oh there you... was like a couple parts that i wanted to like speak on uh yeah go yeah go for it uh but like one of the big things was like as you mentioned i mean this is the the, the most recent thing like you just mentioned like what regulation actually means and it's actually i mean for most of this stuff it's not good for the end consumer and this is like coming from someone that spent like a lot of time with like buying shoes and selling shoes and clothing like it gets to the point where you know companies like nike and adidas the, the methods that they would drop products were so absurd and so convoluted that no regular consumer could ever possibly keep up with it like nike started to implement the random shock drop which is like they just randomly drop a shoe at a random time the, you know, your average consumer has no clue that that's coming out. The only people that are aware are people who are, you know, very aware, like scalpers, people who are in it solely to make money because they're invested into it. Inside information. Like, yeah, like that stuff becomes more valuable. And the people who have inside information get even more power. And it takes even more of the like actual, you know, access away from end consumer. I mean, something as simple as CAPTCHA, I think, is bad. Like people, I remember a lot of people complaining about the Pokemon website having CAPTCHA. Like, Capture does not stop bots whatsoever. All that stuff is automated. And like you farm, like I, I, you can do it so easy. You just Google Capture Farm and you can get like, you know, places all over the world that will do it for super cheap. And you can't compete with that. And all it does is, yeah, I think a lot of people overthink what the problem is. And, you know, they think that, oh, one per person, one per customer is a good thing. It really, it's not going to do anything. Like the guy's going to go to Walmart or Target. He's going to buy two things, go to his car. Like take off his jacket, go back in, buy two things. Because at the end of the day, like they're not going to remember who bought this stuff. So, so for the most part, yeah, as you say, you're just kind of hurting the end consumer, like the like the average user. And yeah, it's, it seems really just that's like an outcry that people want regulation and they think that's going to solve their issues, but it's really not. It's going to make everything more expensive. That's mm -hmm. just how it works. Because it, it, just the people. I mean, it's it's the situation right now. Like, there's only very few people who actually have the opportunity to purchase stuff and if you create more incentive for them to be the one to get as much as they can it's just gonna get worse yeah i mean you uh, the, you, you, you take a guy that buys 10 etbs he's got mm -hmm. a lot more room to work with to to take a smaller margin and sell them for cheaper but if you give a guy one etb then it's not worth his time to sell it at that same price if he were to buy 10 so they, yeah, they raise the price right, that's another that, part of it that's also the concept with like distributor regulation right like if if 
Pokemon steps in and starts telling distributors, you can only dole out this amount to each of these stores. What happens? Well, if you have a store that usually gets 100 boxes and that's how they cover their overhead and that's the plan they built out and now they're getting 10, they're either going to yeah. raise the price to accommodate that or they're going to go out of business. At which point now you have another store that had your your community's back that no longer is in existence, which means they also don't have a place to play, which also hinders organized play. Because, you know, FYI, you, you can't play organized play at TCG Player or Amazon or Walmart. So, <laughs> you know, be, be mindful of that. Yeah. And Imagine if so you like, walk into a Target and you just see a bunch of tables with kids playing Pokemon in the middle, of like the women's club. That way, actually, KB toys and stuff was like that. <laughs> but like, you know, it like that is what happens. And all that does then is knowing that they have to dole out this amount of product among X amount of stores encourages more people that can just go sign up for a random business license to join that are then going to go online that don't care because they know they get X amount and they're going to sell it for whatever they can get versus these stores that are trying to find some happy medium between like you know ebay triple prices versus like what old msrp you know or standard mm -hmm. market prices were like somewhere happy in the middle and so like yeah that just like reinforces yeah Edison's people have this this, more, like, this uh, the distributor regulation one is the one i'm like hearing a lot right now on facebook yeah i think people need to, to, to sit down and 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 really try to understand how how businesses work <laughs> and how we how they could stay afloat and stay uh you know stay away from socialism versus <laughs> Uh, um, like a democracy right um so I, I think a lot of people just like especially on brick and mortar stores and i you know i don't want to like say that people don't understand but until you really sit down and add up like all the expenses i don't think people realize how much on a month-to-month -month basis it costs to keep one of those open when you just like factor employee fees insurance liability insurance oh, like inventory overhead like do you know how many booster boxes it two to five dollars a box profit you have to sell in a month to cover your like ten to twelve thousand dollars of overhead? <laughs> a, a lot. <laughs> like, and so now you're being like you're getting allocated, you know, a store that normally orders 120 boxes gets 40. What what do you do? Like, you still have to cover that same amount of overhead. That didn't change. You know, your 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 expenses each month are the same. You've got to make it up somewhere or you go out of business. And this is like that bigger idea of like the scalper, like everyone that's like selling at whatever price that's not like the perfect price, whatever that is, is <laughs> like getting lumped under like scalper mentality or the, they are a scalper. A scalper is somebody that does not care about the end result of the hobby long term. They care about sucking as much out of it, leaving it in whatever shambles is left and going away anything else being lumped under that is like a completely like inaccurate assessment and when somebody like labels someone a scalper strictly based on the prices they're selling product with no other context no other variables taken into consideration it just tells me that you're uneducated sorry yeah. i said it yeah no i, I that's what that, I'm like it, that's it, that's it the does. biggest like, that's the biggest thing doing, doing yeah that's the biggest problem i think in all of conversation in politics, like normal world politics, not Pokemon politics, is is education. Like that's that's yeah. really the biggest factor in in this because it's like you said, people need to just have the conversation instead of attacking each other. And typically, someone would attack you if they don't have a, a educated response, so they just go that defensive route. And um, like, but yeah, let's I'm let's gonna open this up for me, not you guys. But okay. like, <laughs> if someone ever wants to come talk to me like and have like a one-on-one -on -one, like hey you know i think you're kind of a shitty person and i don't like what you're doing talk yeah. to me about it like yeah maybe hit, we can hit. like even if we don't agree maybe we can find a middle ground like maybe we can come to an understanding on why we each feel the way we do and maybe our views won't change but maybe we'll like at least understand the other person and i think that's like all we can ever ask of someone is to like hear us out and try to understand us even if they don't agree with us and that that's kind of the perspective i take on this you know i talked to caribou today in in on twitter because you know she responded to my video and one of the like the things that i walked away from is you know we're cool there's definitely things we don't agree on and have different viewpoints but i think we like for the most part understand each other and and i think that is like the healthy direction that like if the community can take is just like trying to to walk you know a mile in the other shoes and understand each other that that's how like this can really get fixed i also think just like getting more product out there will just kind of solve everything and this won't well, yeah. be a conversation a year from now but yeah. yeah on that point like i think that's something that a lot of people who are 
talking about the issue right now. It, like they're not just. They're, I mean, obviously there is some influence from you know the, the rise of hokey economic tubers like Pokemon business YouTube and influencers getting into this. But like, I, I mean, a lot of this has to be affected. A lot of the market, like a lot of the sealed modern, is being affected by the strangleholds of COVID from last year. Because a bunch yeah. of the factories in the U.S. closed down for I think ninety days last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. a huge time that they just weren't closed and. I mean, you can have your opinions on, you know, where the price of Pokemon is and the Sealed Modern, but I mean, you have to also acknowledge, like, we, we did go through a pandemic. We did have a lot of shortages of, of jobs and a lot of places closed down in response to it. So it's like, it's kind of like, I don't want to say, I mean, you, you're very vocal, you said uneducated, but like, it just, maybe it's just like not unaware that this is like also yeah, a thing. That's probably like, there's fair. a lot of other yeah. factors that go into it. Mm -hmm. and, I don't, like I, I want I like this conversation and like I try to have this with other people too. It's like I mentioned, like everyone keeps talking about Pokemon prices going crazy. Like just look at every other collectible over the past year. And I, I genuinely call like I just call it boredom. People were at home, they got money from the government. I mean, not to say like some people were unemployed and they got stimulus. And people were just bored. So people spent money on collectibles, they spent money on video games, they spent money on card games, they spent money on like playing stuff online, like people just wanted something to spend money on people like to spend money people like to consume so like i mean you're really into the video game market i like do you think it's because logan paul would make a video game video uh, like mark video game steel you know like a wad of things that's why it's gone crazy like like i mean you know like the price of like these heritage auctions and on ebay and stuff over the past year it's insane this came with five thousand when i bought it yeah. five months ago and it's like 12 and a half 13,000 now like it, yeah. it, it's it, and you're right it's not just pokemon and it's not even just collectibles as a whole or even like crypto or any like the these like flash in the pan like hot moment things i mean we are seeing inflation across the board like real estate market like i wouldn't be surprised to see you know more necessity type things like gas and food and milk and like all of this stuff to, you know you can't put this much money into the economy and not just the U S economy, but the global economy, because a lot of countries did stimulus injections into their system. We saw it in Canada. We saw it in Australia. We saw it in Europe. Yeah. Like you can't do this much cash injection on a large scale and not have any kind of reciprocal effect from that. And so while I do think the collectible market as a whole probably has an, a disproportionate amount of inflation compared to other sectors, yeah. And that may be part of like the variables of like COVID and being at home and things like that. Some degree of inflation was going to occur no matter what. And we're seeing that play out across the board. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I like your point there specifically on that, that it's not just Pokemon. Yeah. And that, that's like the takeaway that I, like, I was trying to say yeah, is like a lot of just Pokemon's Pokemon. increased a lot, but go look at the video game prices a year ago compared to what they are today. <laughs> and like, Pokemon's maybe increased like 50%, like almost everything in video, like Pokemon Emerald last year was like $25 and it's like 134 bucks raw, like just I mean, the loose card. Like, co yeah, coins are crazy right now. Money is crazy. Comic books. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I, somebody, uh, I think it was Sub F today in Discord was talking about how like to buy gold or silver right now, you have to pay like 30% over the spot price on gold and like 20% over on silver because nobody's selling it and everyone's speculating that the market like is way overinflated and that obviously that's where you want to put your money on that. And I know we're like taking like a really like deep market dive here. But I think that's important because I think this like, all related. It's all related. of the, yes, all of this stuff is related. And it like right now, it's all just like getting attributed to like influencers or content creators when like that that is a factor. But it's like one of so many factors that I you know, and this is something that I kind of like iterate in the video is if you take away the influencer factor or you take away the scalpers buying all the product. I don't think necessarily like that may alleviate a little bit and help, but I don't think it completely like just. Re removes the issue like if there were no scalpers in the hobby but everyone was going out and buying all the product they wanted to open i still don't think we have enough supply you know i i still don't think pokemon can meet demand right now because they couldn't meet demand for hidden fates when it was out before all these people came into the community we saw supply shortage issues back in 2019 yeah they just like yeah. didn't plan and then we had more things compound on top and so i yes i like your point about multiple markets because it it is 100 percent. yeah and we joke about, I mean, you always see people joking like, oh, st it's stimmy time. We got Biden. Stimmy money. <laughs> I'm one Biden of those um, But like, it's a real thing. Like, 
people wouldn't be listing all this stuff like the past two weeks. Like if, if they, if there wasn't like a genuine thing where people are going to get the stimulus and be like, Oh shit, I kind of wanted that Charizard. Or I really wanted that Dragonite card graded. I mean, now I got $1,600. It's a hundred bucks. Let me just buy it. And I, I think that's like a, that's a genuine thing. But that's why, like, I'm just surprised that people aren't talking about that. Like if, if you really want to do research on this, you could probably just look at every single time we got a stimulus check from the government, look at like the next two weeks of eBay sales for Pokemon products and see if you do see a peak around there and then like a relative lull and then a peak on the next wave. And you probably would like, I, I, I definitely I experienced it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't even have to look at the numbers cause I, well, I, I and that makes sense, right? The the goal of a stimulus is like a media immediate yeah, yeah. injection back into the economy. For many, it's like paying their bills. But there's also like a lot of people that got stimulus money that probably didn't need it because it's more expensive to like weed those people out than it is to just give them the money. And that money will get injected on like more, you know, frivolous things or things that are not necessities, right? I shouldn't say frivolous, but like things that are not necessities wants, right? And so those but that's that still stimulates the you know, I'm, somewhere. I'm actually starting yeah. to hear that that the government's asking for some money back from people and that put a little bit of fear into my eyes so wait yeah wait, what do you, what I've, do you mean? I've had some had some friends and actually other family members that have been reached out by the government to take the money back that they've gotten oh like they incorrectly applied for it or I'm just it, confused. Yeah, it just didn't fall fall in line with exactly what they oh, were like paying the money out for. Maybe their taxes or something were like no, like like oh, they they, they applied filed. Yeah, like they they like they they on this year's maybe. Well, they they applied for for uh, uh you know because they for unemployment and for whatever reason uh, the government didn't agree with it and they've been asking for money when they were unemployed. Because I've heard about a lot of like the PPP loans like those are starting to get really yeah. scrutinized in terms of who's applying for them and who's getting that money because they've they been scrutinized between... ppp for a while yeah like, yeah i was gonna say because there was a lot of like misuse of that the first go around and yeah. now they're yeah so that could be a lot of money like coming out it might be a michigan <laughs> your family's in michigan yeah I'm guessing, right yeah because yeah, i had a friend that that was the same thing with them that they had like applied for unemployment and then I think the government asked for the money back because they weren't actually unemployed. They were a student at the time, so they shouldn't have mm. qualified for it under something. Mm. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a state government thing, too. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so there's there's money that's going to be I, I, that probably got spent on Pokemon that's going to have to get back somehow. So th there's a yeah, little fire sales, sales baby. All my money, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it back. I'll just give you my routing and make out number. And you just... <laughs> They already have suck out whatever's left. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, all right. Enough of that talk. We it got to a good place though. I think we we can end off yeah. on that note. Um, Edison, you you said you had some 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 uh, constructive criticism for my vlog from from Dubai. I'm curious to know what what your thoughts were on this. This is it's a very short comment. Uh, you had a lot. You played a, like the intro was grid. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I felt very involved, very intimate. Mm -hmm. um and then the travel part you know it was a decent it was a good montage you know showing how you got to dubai like the, you know take the flights and stuff you know if you, and then when you got to dubai it was just it was just like montage of you doing stuff with video with music yeah. and i wish like when you went shop to the market like i wish there was like a period after where you're like oh this is what i bought you went shopping but i didn't understand what you bought. i do i do oh. have that i just didn't i didn't use it okay so that's good to I hear that's good yeah. to hear so so that's the thing right i I wanted to do this vlog kind of like real YouTube vlog style, but I realized I'm not good at that after watching all the clips afterwards. Um, the clip of what I bought from the shop, though, that's one that I found very funny and one that I think I did well. So at some point in my life here, I'm going to put together a bigger vlog and have that actual experience because I did, I filmed the, uh, I went to that like, to that to that shop it's called the gold souk the spice souk where they have all the gold and and the, the spices right and within there everyone's trying to sell people fake watches fake gucci fake whatever and i actually went to one of the guys shops that like you go through a back alley go up the stairs go into his like apartment building or whatever the heck it is it was real sketchy um but i filmed the entire thing going into his shop buying i bought a fake louis vuitton bag for my mom i bought some fake gucci shirts for myself i bought some like 
uh, just random knickknacks for whoever, like my other family members. So I filmed that whole thing, and it was just it, it, it was pretty entertaining. I don't know how well the the video looks, but the the conversation and the negotiations was was quite interesting. So hopefully, I can yeah, put that together. That, I was gonna say that same thing is like seeing it with the music, everything's cool, but like I'm there to watch Radar, so like I want to yeah. hear your experiences. Mm. Like even if you don't think you did it well in vlog style. I would rather hear like a four out of 10 radar commentary on this thing I'm doing than some random music. And it doesn't mean it wasn't good. It just means like, that's what I want to see. My only other critique was, and I know that it's because you're making it a bigger series, but calling it like a Pokemon card vlog, but then none of it had anything to do <laughs> that with Pokemon. That made so like many people mad. Seconds yeah. is like always going to like, I think most people still would have watched it. I think it's just yeah. like, it creates like this, you know, it's kind of like what we talked about with our podcast really early on. We're like, we're going to make a title about something, but then we don't talk about it until 45 minutes in. People like <laughs> yeah. feel misled that they didn't get it. Yeah. And so like we, I think it's like that same thing, right? Mm. But there was definitely um, a few people I, upset in the comments. <laughs> oh, were there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, okay. they were, yeah. But yeah. Question for you, actually. Did you mail that stuff back or did you bring it back yourself? I brought it back myself. Um, and did you declare it? Declare what? Uh, no, you don't have to declare that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm just curious because, like, br like bringing back like counterfeit goods and stuff, even if you're not aware that they are, is something that TSA like usually flags oh, pretty hard. Yeah. And so I'm just more surprised that they didn't. No. Yeah, flag. they didn't. Uh, Especially on like fake Louis Vuitton. Yeah. You know, I think um, just have like I just had one off of, of things, right? So it's kind of like a gag gift, but I, it is. It is. Technically, yeah. Well, not, yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it's not about like, oh, we're gonna arrest radar at the airport, right? right? It's they usually just confiscate it because right. they don't want that stuff coming into our market, right? Right, right. And, and so, like, I've just read a lot of stories about like people like buying that thing because they think it's cool, and sometimes they even think it's real, and then like getting it confiscated at the mm -hmm. airport because they like tell them like you can't bring that into the country, you know? Right. Like, if you look at like customs and border protection, it's like right on there. Like any of that kind of stuff will be confiscated. And mm -hmm. so I was just curious if you shipped it back yeah. or if they said no. anything. Or... No, I brought it with me and it got through just fine. It's funny. Every time that I, it's just, this is Pokemon, but every time I fly domestically with Pokemon, with a box, with PSA cards, they always check my bag because it's tightly packed. It looks like, I don't know what, they always look at my bag and go yeah. through it. But they didn't for the international ones at all for the Pokemon stuff. Uh, I mean, going there... It didn't matter because it was just the one card I brought. But coming back, I had the box, the Shadowless box. I had the whole Sky Ridge reverse rare set. Like, I had a lot, and they didn't go through it. Um, maybe they have better X-ray machines or whatever the heck they use, and they could actually see. I was trying to peek, and one of the machines I went through in Dubai on the way home, like, I could actually see, like, Pokemon <laughs> on on the box like through my bag it was really weird or at least the oh, wow. the outline of it not like clear right yeah that's not suspicious at all to get yourself arrested trying to like get the inside scoop oh it's up. no it's 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 there like <laughs> you know it's you. it's there for, you know. i've done it too when you yeah. go through and you want to see what it looks like on our machines and stuff i'm sure everybody does that but. yeah yeah so um yeah i got through just fine um yeah the the fake louis vuitton bag i was a little yeah like, i knew that would wouldn't be a great thing but i figured it was just it was a small bag and um well and you've actually gotta, no like, i checked sure that bag i wonder, i like, checked that bag actually i checked that bag the, with the with the fake stuff so okay so maybe yeah you wonder how they know right like I think, right. I think it's a quantity thing too like if you're yeah. just walk, if raider's just walking through and he has like the bag with him like there's really no reason to assume anything right well and there like, i know for a fact that there's certain things that flag harder and like I assume quantity matters too. I, like I was gonna say fake quantity. Rolexes, like fake yeah. jewelry, anything like that is usually pretty high up that list. Mm -hmm. Um and anything that, that generally kind of already stuff, has yeah. to have like a declaration with it, like wine or yeah. cheese or like any type of like food, um <laughs> cigars, like anything that is like a specific like import already, a lot of times it has to do with tax, like if they already have like a like denim even if it's legitimate um like bringing in denim from like south korea for example does it matter denim over there is like way cheaper is uh very like very like don't do that so it probably matters based on the the region like i would assume 
cigars, probably, you think yeah. of like Cuban cigars. Like you probably have yeah. to. Yeah. I don't know. If, I think we fixed that relationship. I actually think that's legalized now. Yeah, I we fixed that. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it depends on where. That was the point you got out of Radar's story. Was he, he didn't declare that he bought Gucci. No, I got it out of his story just now when he said that. You know, I watched the whole vlog. It was good. But I just, he, yeah, you said that. And then I was just thinking, like, did he declare that? <laughs> like, but, but yes, I, I do agree with you. I, like, I, that was my plan to start, was to do like a, a more, yeah, like a, a, a real type vlog. It just didn't come together like I thought it would just as I skimmed through it. I think there's, it's still salvageable with what I have because I have a lot of, of just random video like that, me talking to the camera, trying to talk to the camera to create a story. Um, so I, I'll, I'll try to do that eventually. I, I don't really have any, I don't care to put that out anytime soon or even put it out for like Pokemon Radar. I might just put it on my personal uh, YouTube, which people don't know about. So um <laughs> yeah now <laughs> good luck finding it um but yeah yeah okay i appreciate that I, that's good feedback you just challenge the internet to find <laughs> your youtube you're the <laughs> you never say you can't find it yeah dude you <laughs> i'm doing i mean I, ashton said too like the very first part of it was like remember that card that i bought and then everything else after that nothing to do with the card i was like okay he's gonna get to it he's gonna show <laughs> us the card it's just the treat and at the end i was told oh you just gotta wait till the next one I was like, oh, that's okay. right well it Which was it came it came today yeah and i yeah. i got a lot of views today so i think that teaser well see that that's the other thing too i thought to myself was all right i haven't put out a video in like two weeks i gotta do something to like hype up this this podcast with how the many, trade how many views is that do you know I'm i, th I right think now. on my end on my end it's higher it says like 1.5 yeah yeah that's great dude in eight hours too yeah Woo. much better what than, than what i typically i saw you do. did updates on instagram but i don't think you used updates on youtube right you didn't do anything mm -mm. you could just post like a i know sean does like the blog posts a lot now yeah or he'll like you know just either a teaser or a question or like an update I think those are pretty useful. Yeah, like I didn't. I'm sorry, I'm not putting a video out today. Like I'll see that from from Sean quite a bit now because he gets lazy. But uh, just gets busy, as he says. <laughs> busy. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do blog posts yet. They say you need a thousand subscribers. Really? Which I is didn't. Know very that. confusing. Blog posts are huge, and there was yeah. a trick that. So I did a poll once, and I got like insane, like like um engagement like compared to normal posts I think I and then one day i was one watching time. pat flynn's channel and he was like talking about how there was like a glitch with polls and how they'll actually extend beyond like community posts are usually only supposed to like market to people that have subscri subscribed to your channel but yeah. apparently polls will show up for anyone and not yeah, just I, I... your community which is like a great way to like market yourself beyond your community and he had like explained that and that's like oh my god that makes so much sense and so now i've started like trickling like even if i just like want to tell my community something like i'll turn it into a poll somehow because like it extends it out further and so yeah i i like the community tab on youtube i think that is is like a very underused feature by creators that i mean because it's essentially like a news feed but it's like right with the people that you're mm -hmm. already like trying to reach instead of like having to reach them on another platform and get them to come over which can happen to a certain degree but you're never going to like have a hundred percent conversion or anywhere close yeah. instead you can just like target them right there already here while they're on the app and so like that to like yeah i, I i'm a, i love the community tab a lot yeah. it, it also has integration with memberships so if you get like the join button like have a membership tier so like for example i've got four tiers on my channel i can make posts and have them subjected like only to like a certain membership tier so like that way, like, for example, I've got a Q&A for the gold tier coming out. Well, obviously, people that just watch the channel are in bronze and silver don't need to see that. So I can just make a post like to the gold tier and say, hey, by the way, get your questions in before we do that. Like that kind of and, like, I think that kind of like flexibility of the community tab is, is, is so useful. Is it like a paid thing? Is it like is gold like, like a paid member? Tab? No, no, the, the membership. The membership thing, yeah. So if you look, I think Radar has it too. If you look at the mm -hmm. channel by where you hit subscribe, there's a button that says join. join. And then yeah. there's, yeah. And that's something that you unlock at, I think you can do it at a thousand subs. Yeah, it's once also. you monetize, I believe. 
yeah yeah once you have the ability to monetize then you get the ability to do like super chats and that kind of I'm stuff still not there yet sean so yeah close. it's you'll, it's it's youtube you'll you know, trying to time we just take... gotta do a few more of these podcasts <laughs> not two months apart yeah but <laughs> everyone go follow edison steers right now and oh, thank you thank you but like, yeah but i think people are, you could just put it in the description but you I? I think people are just really sleeping on that community tab mm-hmm. because of how many integrations it has throughout youtube and everything that it can do and like the engagement that you can get yeah. with your community because like people comment on youtube videos all the time and it doesn't mean though that they are like engaged to your community they may just like see that video on their home screen comment and then leave Mm-hmm. this like really shows you like who is engaging because youtube is going to put your thing in front of people that are more likely to respond yeah. right and so it shows me like which of my viewers are most likely watching all of my videos and and like that way then when they comment in the comments i can prioritize their comments to like respond to because you know if they're going to engage with me and help support me i'm going to try to like support them and so yeah i that is a good feeling finding the people that kind of like the the people who always watch and always comment and then get to engage with them like that's yeah and this is something that kind of so i've been reading pat flynn's book super fans that really hones in on like the idea that you know you can aim to have like as massive of an audience as you want but sometimes it can really pay off to just like provide value to like a core group of people and like get them to become super fans and like the like serve them versus trying to just like infinitely serve everyone and it doesn't mean you can't like try to help everyone and keep growing but that you you know we lost menace's picture but that you you know continue like that you always make sure you know like who your base is that you Mm -hmm. like the people that will always support you and have your back whether i'm on instagram or youtube or tiktok or wherever and so um i've really started to like internalize that idea because those people will also then help you grow right? right they you know that's the kind of word of mouth that like those people support you they'll get other people to support you and like that you actually do like i mean look at our discord community like so many of us are really close knit and people will pop in and be like oh, wow radar radar actually talks here you know like like that kind of thing or like those types of things and like that to me is like what it's all about yeah. and so and i think like things like the community tab really help foster that you know like that community i know it's kind of mm-hmm. like a meme but it, to me it's it's one of the most like social media-esque things that like really is valuable well yeah they tie they take that from instagram they take the the membership thing from twitch or patreon and they take the yeah. shorts from tiktok nice like mix they're bringing it all and they're, in yeah and they're integrating them all together like yeah. i don't know if you guys saw you know we're mentioning pat flynn his channel deep pocket monster he did a short on the the proxy charizards on ebay which are counterfeits they're scams and it was recent, right? and one. yeah and he yeah. put it up he actually it made it on trending in the uk to number 11 it has like it, last i looked three hundred fifty thousand views or wow. something and like it's absolutely exploding and that's an example of like a short is effectively like a tiktok clip i mean the same amount of time and everything mm-hmm. and oh this, youtube okay. has like yeah. integrated that into the system now where like it's finding its way to get similar engagement whereas if he made that a 10 minute video talking about it there's a high likelihood that never sees that kind of engagement or if he did that on tiktok if he did that on tiktok and got three hundred and fifty thousand views it wouldn't have transferred to his youtube the same way that correct how many of those actually convert over then and and like shorts are built the same way right after like if somebody watches one of yours it'll play another but of yours unlike tiktok mm-hmm. which sometimes plays your video or it'll play someone else's right. and i think shorts also play others i think it's like you can get other people's on the short shelf but if like if they don't like go to the next one and it just ends it'll start another one of yours yeah you oh, can, i think you can set it up yeah. however you want it yeah, yeah so like it'll start another one of yours and just keep playing yours if you have more but they can also just swipe to go to somebody else's. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, yeah, I, I this, really this all... like YouTube now that I'm like delving more into it. Um, like, there's so much I like want to learn and improve on, and like, not to like bring it back to the caribou video, but one of the things that I really did like about her video and it getting everyone to talk about this stuff is that it's got me to like analyze my own content and like. What am I making? Why am I making it? Is this worth putting out to other people? Like, would I watch this myself? You know, and like, 
how I can really do better with my content to provide my viewer value. And part of that has been, what are all of the features that I have here that I'm not using right now because I've just been too lazy to learn about that can help me bring that value to the to the viewer. And the community tab has been one of those that's like, yeah, I, mean, I don't even know how we got on the topic, but I, I'm a, I, if you guys I, can't tell yet, I'm a big fan of the community. Tab. I, I don't know either, but yeah, it's super important because, you know, as if, if you were to ever convert to, I mean, you're, you are a full-time content creator now, but I know it's not your, your main source of income, but if, it, if you ever were to take that shift, take that leap to do that, you know, you, you rely on your viewers to support you. And yeah. it's and and having that asking that question: Are you providing enough value to these people um, to make you feel good about it? Because I mean, look, a thousand is not a unfathomable number. Like a thousand is very realistic for anybody to reach. And if you get a thousand, a, a thousand fans, a thousand people to pay ten dollars yeah. a month, and that's you know one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. That's an incredible salary, and it's. Not that much to ask for from most people, you know, especially if you're providing ten dollars worth of value to them. So it's it's this type of of work is a very achievable thing for many people. It's just about going in as is going in deep as much as you on on understanding how it all works, um, and then of course taking in all the criticism and really asking yourself, making sure that you're holding yourself accountable, providing these people that value. To make it all to make it all work so um and i i think what you just mentioned there is like such a valuable point that if i didn't highlight maybe just like goes under the radar no pun intended but like if like if you talk to some of these big creators on youtube and i'm not one of those people so don't ask me but like if yet. you talk to some of these like really big people like jarvis let's use jarvis as an example name job we're friends with jarvis uh, these people don't like happenstance <laughs> though. It's not like they just like woke up one day and put up a video and blew up and just was were making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. And like a lot of like it does happen, right? It has happened, but that's like more of a fluke than like yeah. if it, when you talk to a lot of these like big creators or like you listen to their podcast or listen, you can tell they understand this stuff inside and out. They know mm -hmm. all the inner workings. They know how the algorithm works. They know how to talk to the right people and network to figure these things out. They understand like the metrics YouTube wants. They understand the best ways to engage their community and where and what time. Like, it's not like this. They just like throw up videos and hope for the best. Like these people like put in the time and do the research and really like grind on this to learn it just like you would any other industry or any job you get where you have to learn the role and learn your position and learn what to do and what works and what doesn't. It's that same mentality. And I think like, even I was one of those people that from the outside just always kind of thought, yeah, they just make funny videos and put them up and people like, like I was reading a book that was talking about Mr. Beast and like how everything he does is structured down to a T. I mean, down to like the second that they put the ads in, the exact kind of ads that get put in, their sponsorships, you know, who they do on which video and that kind of thing, you know, what days they upload the video, what times, you know, that they'll film the same thing a bunch of times to make sure that it's like conveyed in the exact right spot and that like he's highlighted on the screen the perfect, like all of these different things, like none of this is happenstance. And so... I think your point of that is like that, like, you know, it's work like that to learn these things and understand the nuances is like such a big one because I, you know, I was one of those creators that jumped into this and just thought, well, if I just upload videos, eventually I'll just snowball and things will go well. And then I realized like, or I could adjust my lighting and change my background and work on these setup things. And some of this is like a process over time, but all of that stuff factors. And, you know, we're watching so many content creators in Pokemon specifically that are kind of going through this process right yeah. now, right? We just saw that Pokenomics with Jake and Raffi yeah. switched to Pokenomics doing thumbnails, right? We're new, seeing new logo, all of these got a new camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, and that's cool. That's awesome to see, yeah. you know, we're watching the progress. Like, I remember Netflix exactly on his, yeah, on his channel of my channel where he like went through my old videos. It was like, I could see right where you like decided to adjust your thumbnails and like start putting the cats in it and branding the cats as like part of your channel and like mm -hmm. where you re realize like oh shoot i can't just do the cats i also still need to be in the thumbnail and like these are all like things that like people are working through you know we have talked like how many times all three of us have like sat and like broken this stuff down and tried to figure these things out and like you know it 
I don't know. A lot of work goes in behind the scenes. I think more than what anyone ever anticipates, like yeah. really does. So, yeah. I mean, I think the put biggest in the work. Yeah, but I, I do think, you know, the, the biggest wall to climb for 99% of people is, is like that, just putting out the content, right? I mean, doing yeah. it, getting a feel for it, and just understanding the workflow. And then once you're comfortable with that, diving into all that, all the extras. Yeah. That's a yeah, whole. You can't understand where your sh your shortcomings are exactly if you're not doing it. Have it, it started yeah. exactly, <laughs> like, and, you know, and that's like... that's the thing. Just like start, find a friend to start with. I mean, Sean, you you had done YouTube before, but mm -hmm. I, I, like honestly, not before, well, but I did it. <laughs> but you you did it, and then you know, as soon as we kind of started talking about you jumping in and doing a podcast with me, you were all gun ho about doing YouTube again, and you wanted me to hold you accountable if like. We started the slowdown. I, I also pushed Sean pretty hard onto that. He did. Yeah, a lot of people, yeah, did. A lot of a people, lot of did. people did. A lot of people were like, look, you've done this before. You know that there's like a group of people that want this type of content. And for the most part, I knew where a lot of my pitfalls were. I didn't make thumbnails. I didn't like craft my titles. I didn't put any effort into learning the algorithm. And I wasn't <laughs> consistent with it. Like I was my own worst enemy. And mm -hmm. part of it was just like getting myself in a position in life where I could do those things and want to do those things. Like an example is I was never consistent because I always had to set up my camera and set up all my lighting and everything because I have it where it was just always set up, which made me never want to start a video because I'd have an hour and set up and tear down to make a 15 minute video, which just like felt terrible. Now I've put myself in a position where I can just turn the camera on, turn my lights on and start. And that's helped me be consistent. And so a lot of this whole process is just like, finding your own weaknesses yeah. and working through them. And to your point, Radar, you can't really do that unless you just start yeah. and figure out where your weaknesses are, right? I started back in, you know, 2016. I remember making like videos on evolutions on YouTube, right? Yeah. Like when it came <laughs> out, I still have them on my channel unlisted. They're never going to go live, by the way. Don't, <laughs> don't expect it, but they were awful. But like, 10, you know, reaction, like an, reaction yeah, video. Yeah, that's my 100,000 sub. Thing. you can watch my evolutions video from 2016 you should do reaction like, videos to it i, I want to see it yeah but like that you know but that helped me find my weaknesses right when i restarted this i knew what my weaknesses were from before and that if yeah. i was going to do this you know with all the encouragement i was getting i needed to shore these up from the start or i would just end up right where i was to begin with mm -hmm. and had i not started that before starting at this time i probably would have ended up the same way i did the first time because i wouldn't have known and then just felt discouraged mm -hmm. and again i don't know even how we got here on this topic but i feel like this is like a good topic like yeah this was just content creation in general because i think we're all still growing right none of us are like huge but we're like we're get like we're climbing the ladder and we're figuring out you know the best ways to go up and i've kind of have ways that I've, we can improve. I've, I've taken a different path i've kind of shied away from this and and gone behind the scenes more and and like i said I'm I'm a corporate sellout now again, which uh, that yeah. was I, I like it. I like corporate world. I like yeah. being part of that that side of things. So, like I. But part of what you're doing there is also content. Exactly. So, like, exactly. Yeah. 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 You still have to learn these things and go through that process. Right. And part of you getting to the like corporate sellout mentality was doing this on your own exactly. and realizing like I kind of like other people giving me some of the structure and I just do the things I like to do or am good at. Like. But also doing this. But also doing this built up you know, more of my brand, more of my name, more, more credibility and led me there. So, you yeah. know, I, I never stopped. Like you don't, like, I just kept on going is it, it, it was weird, right? When I first quit my job and I just started putting in all these hours to create content that I saw like pennies on the hour, it made zero yeah. sense to me financially. <laughs> what am I doing? Like people, like my parents sat me down like, what are you okay? What are you doing? And I was just like, I'm having a good time, having fun. But it was all calculated too of, of, do you do you want to know something funny? Yeah. So I made six like sixty one videos back in like twenty sixteen doing YouTube, and I never attached a bank account to my AdSense <laughs> to like cash out anything. I found out they have a hundred dollar threshold, so you have to hit a hundred bucks to get a cash out. I had forty one dollars in my AdSense. So from twenty sixteen, <laughs> if you want to know how bad Pokemon economic content and how many people cared about it back then. I did like 61 videos and had $41 in revenue. Do you know how much like my dollar per hour was like three cents? <laughs> like, like that's the thing, man. And like that, you know, the bigger point of this whole thing, so many people out there are making content like in Pokemon. That's like great content 
that are have no financial reward from it. They're just like doing it because they enjoy it. And I think that's like at the end of the day, like if you make sure that you continue to do it because you enjoy it, whether the money does or doesn't come, you will find success because mm-hmm. you're doing it because you enjoy it. Yeah, your end goal definitely just can't be, oh, I'm going to be a successful YouTuber off the bat. Like, yeah, even, even now, too. man, I'm learning, like, how hard, like, even with the grind, it is very tough. And, like, you know, a lot of that's going to come down to the YouTube algorithm, how big your sector on YouTube is, you know, like, Pokemon oh. even is still niche on YouTube, and the yeah. Pokemon market section is very niche on YouTube. And so, you know, and that this is, like, the kind of thing that, you know, um not to like bring up jarvis again but he started doing tech videos right which yeah. isn't even like what he does today he does you know more like these i wouldn't say like reaction videos, or like like culture videos or like comedic, whatever you know comedic like, responses comedic, or, yeah like yeah. entertainment like he's a comedian yeah. and you know but like that wasn't how he started right like he made these things and then transitioned into other things and that's kind of like the the whole process like i've talked to you radar about like maybe i should just like do a naruto channel like for fun or or something you know video a lot of people want me to do a video game channel yeah. and i just think that like there's so many great creators in that scene already that like i'm not sure where i could contribute collabs baby would be di- well yeah but like what i could contribute that's different right oh. like if i do it i want to be like something unique mm-hmm. and i don't necessarily just want to do another market channel yeah. you know like you already have the channel for that like at least yeah exactly like that, yeah, really i already have the channel strong. for that like Oh, like that's the thing is like I would just want to geek out about video games, but well, you any see, different. See, see, I mean, everyone else. yeah, but I mean, you, you you should start dabbling with that. I mean, maybe not yet. You're still you're still a small yeah, channel. You're still growing, stuff. and your Pokemon like that's your content right now. Uh, I, I know you've in some of your private videos you've dived into the other stuff as well of what you're buying, what you're looking at, mm-hmm. um, because you know Squeak's Game World is a great name because you can expand into everything yeah, outside of Pokemon. Limited. Yeah, um, so hopefully you'll be able to do that on your same channel if you're not already doing it on a different channel. But um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I, I would love to see it. I mean, it probably wouldn't do well <laughs> compared to your other videos. Full, you know, which you, is okay, you, and like, you know that. And that's the point. If so, you're doing it for the fun of it yeah. because you enjoy it, like it, it actually just doesn't matter. And I know a lot of people like, oh, that's just not true. Like. It really doesn't like, but I you made, also like, like I said, I made so many videos back in 2016 because I was having an absolute blast with it and loved talking about this stuff and got nothing out of it except yeah. like, you know, some friends, which was like totally worth it. Right. right. But and and, yeah. and you also like enjoy this process of under like the YouTube thing, of, like you said, understanding how I it do. works, like the business side of it. So there's that manic side of you that <laughs> that does that. <laughs> Wow, yeah. <laughs> well no i mean that's a great thing to have i you know it's it's uh, no i know we talk, yeah because you always be yeah. like don't get discouraged don't look at all the numbers yeah and then you're but like it helps you have so much fun like analyzing all of this stuff and i yeah. do i like because it, it's a challenge to me it's like a puzzle that if i can solve it like i win mm-hmm. a bigger and better a... community which is like okay. to me it's the interaction like greater said this is not my mainstream of income like if, if youtube doesn't make me a, another dollar ever that's okay like obviously yeah. i'd love it too but like that's okay but like to me and this was 2016 too youtube's about interactivity to me like getting to meet new people and make friends to talk about the things i enjoy is like like i met radar through this right like i met radar through like doing stuff like this and i met you through like you found my youtube which is like how we are on a podcast right now how cool yeah. is that like that to me is so freaking <laughs> cool like we are friends now because you saw a video i made and thought yeah, join that guy's discord and now we're all friends and we're on a pot like dude that's what it's all about man like and that's yeah. what pokemon's about like not to like bring it back but like dang, bring it back man. baby I'm just bring like, it back <laughs> i'm just like getting excited like this is what it's all about to me this is what makes it fun it's just like meeting people that have similar interests and like enjoying it you know like i don't know yeah. dang you got any final thoughts edison sweet. we've got uh we we all want to watch something that's coming on soon so um Oh, uh, not really. I had a bunch of cards that I bought. I didn't even want to see them, but what'd you get? Yeah, I want to see them. Uh, I'll do it quick. Bought this card recently. I don't know if you can see it well. Oh, is that an elective buzz from Triumph or from yeah Triumphant, right? Or on the Electivire. 
it's elected buzz it's like a japanese lp promo they had like a tournament release oh the, the le- oh, symbol it's like the legend oh this like it, an n no 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 it's the same stamp as like the indigo plateau in the no no yeah. no no in the corner in the corner in the cor- there's two what talking about the set stamp the set symbol yeah i don't think yeah. so this, you're this covering stamp- it with your finger the I'm set not- no the set symbol like the normal oh yeah. it's a promo it's a promo Oh, oh I think yeah. we got that card in a set, though. In yeah, English. no, we did the, the, all those. You know, the Indigo Plateau, the Burn Tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were all set cards, but they made them holographic yeah, that for unleashed? that promo. Hold on, I'm going to look. It might be Unleashed, because I know the Delective Buyer. That's actually a different card I bought. I bought a bunch of those Elective Buyer uh, promos from the pre-release promos. Oh, uh, no. I mean, everything you said is good. I, I think... In your point, you're like starting a YouTube. That's kind of where I'm triumphant. I was right. It is triumphant. It is. Yeah, I, I have the. After I guessed every other set too, but it is. Yeah, it is triumphant. Yeah, I just started a channel to because I, I, as I said, like I, I wanted to, I wanted to send cards to CGC to grade, and I didn't want to forget what cards I sent, so that I made a channel literally just to show what cards I was sending, and then people happened to watch it. And I was like, oh, okay, dude, your like, channel get- gets like a just ton of views like like view proportion to subscriber like a very large yours. amount yeah it, well it used to now i just get downloaded <laughs> but but it used to but yeah controversial, you, you do, man like and that's why i think like you will be big like if you just learn like the nuances of this stuff my radar you, you mentioned it too, like content creation is a big part and like i'm just not producing content at like a level that i'm i i, I still know my quality the quality of my content can definitely go up and it's also like the amount that I'm producing. I'm just never producing yeah. enough. I do like a video once every two weeks, which is definitely not helping me. Um, at yeah, all. Yeah, like YouTube algorithm. Like, you don't have to do like everyday video or whatever, but it's an easier gateway to get started. Like, yeah. and like I, I think, think a lot they- of creators could do that. Like, Leonhart used to do a video every day and then eventually yeah. transitioned. I think it was to like six days a week. I don't know if he does less than that now, but I remember when he made that transition. Hmm. Right. And like, I, I think that there's a lot of like channels that go through that that process of like getting started and just like pumping out content and then reining it back once they've got like their core base. Or you and, could be like me and do that within like a month, right? And just every day and then like next week, oh okay, guys, I'm doing five five videos a week. Okay, next week, three videos a week, guys, and then you just speed run, you speed ran it. Yeah. Well and <laughs> yeah, you did the YouTube speed speed run. Run. But like and I think that there's you know, but also think of it from like a consumer perspective. Like last week, I only had three videos or something like that because yeah. it was Battle Styles came out and they also like did like a complete restock of Shining Fates. And I woke up one morning and my order log was like 171. And so I was playing like catch up the whole week. Mm. And it was just like one of those things where like I can't put my main income stream in harm's way for YouTube, you know, and like even though I wanted to, I wanted nothing more than to not pack an order and film a video because I hate packing orders. But like, I understand like those priorities. So like, I think that's one of those things that's always a struggle is to like be consistent because it's really easy to like find reasons not to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's why, like for me, I'm trying to like film more content ahead of time. So when I encounter that situation on the next set release, which will inevitably happen, I can plug videos in there that I've got backlogged. And that's like, part of that just understanding the process and getting in a groove and that kind of thing you mentioned this too like uh uh, because i remember i spoke like when we talked about this like over the summer before you moved was that how how much of a pain it was to set up for videos and like that you know bringing everything down and setting it up and that's like the situation i'm in like realistically it takes me like a half hour to set up and get ready for like what a 10 15 minute video It, it just it doesn't make any sense yeah so I think moving forward, I'm, I'm going to, I mentioned it to you before this, that like I, I did want to get like an actual camera or something instead of using my phone and have that like in just a dedicated place. So then, yeah, it, I mean, it helps because like PWCC, it's super easy to do a video for you. Like to go, I mean, it's hard to curate it, but you're there, you're fresh, you're, it's, it's all yeah. set up. Like, yeah, if, you, I mean, you, don't, you, you can't get an excuse. Think about the setup time that Mr. Beast had to take when he first started to do those types of videos. It probably took days, yeah. right? And now, mm-hmm. since he understands the process, how to go viral, how to do and put this all together, put his his crazy yeah. ideas that you have to figure out how to make it work. Now it's structured. It's it's automated. He can take almost any idea and put it in that same structure, give or take a little bit here and there, 
Yeah, and and just make it easier for them. Yeah, and you know, like even now, I'm still changing things. Right, this is the first time on on right. you know Radar's channel that people will see me from this angle with like who is no this big guy? Red banner in the background anymore. You don't see my big pile of like random mail shit that I haven't sorted for three weeks. That's <laughs> off to the side. Like none of that. You know, like and like trying these different things. Like we were talking about before we went live that like I considered painting this wall black and doing more like like i've been reading about color theory and like the idea of like setting the tone for a video and like getting your viewer to engage engage based on like how they feel just by seeing the screen you know all these different things that go into this process that people never like i never thought about that the first time i watched a video on this where i i was like looking up a lighting tutorial and the guy started <laughs> talking about color theory and i'm like what the hell did i just start watching but then by the time i got to the end of it i was like this makes so much sense and like people don't think about like how such subtle things can matter, you know, and to your point, Edison, about like the the filming, right, and how the teardown and everything. I think one of the things that in the past I could have done that I kind of just used it as an excuse was I could have filmed multiple videos. I set it up and filmed multiple, right? And depending on your content style, that can be harder. But I think that was like yeah. one of those examples where like maybe I was just making excuses. I, I think sometimes there was merit to it, but other times like I could have justified it. It really depends on like how yeah. planned out your content can be ahead of time. You know, like if you're doing pack openings or something, you could just do 30 of those. Great fillers. Me, in a day. Great fillers. But if you're doing like, yeah, but if you're doing like market analysis, I can't film market analysis for two months from well, now. Yeah, that's my it's point. Yeah, it's going to be different. And mm. which is why, like, I'm messing around with new types of content, like doing more of like these story esque videos about past market things that happen. So I could plug those in on any day, you know, and like things like that. And I think that's like kind of the the evolution, you know, of the creator again, no pun intended. But uh, it is like learning this process and everything and like finding other people that you can bounce ideas off of and work off of and be like, Hey, do you like this thumbnail or this thumbnail? Like, cause all these things matter, you know, and that, you know, so yeah, if you're, at, since it's just turned into like a creator think tank, Support if thing, you're out yeah. there like making content, though, like these are the, the types of things that like we think about and whether or not they're the right things. I mean, I think we feel like they're the right things. And a lot of this is like other stuff that other more successful people have kind of instilled upon us to do, you know? And so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would just and, say don't. In this conversation, you want to live the squeaks way, not the radar way. Take it back to like our old podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We both still somehow get to the end goal. It's just a very, very different journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Everyone has their own kind of journey. Yeah. So, Mine's like, yeah, I'll anyway. drive in a car 12 hours to get there. Radar, I'll fly two hours in a plane and jump out of it with a. Much different tolerance. So but like that's that's the whole the whole thing. And I think you know a, a nice summary of this is just kind of like it is a journey. You you can't expect it to happen overnight. But you'll find that if you do this journey, even if you get to your end goal, you'll find that most of the satisfaction came from the journey and doing it, not from the end goal. And like for me, I'm I'm having a blast. If I ne if I never blow up, I never hit even 10k subs because that was kind of like my my goal for the first half of the year was 10k. I'm having such a blast doing this and learning about it and like all these things that like that it that is the the bread and butter for me. It's almost like Pokemon too. Like we always talk about how everything has a price for me because I enjoy the journey of getting it. Like once I get it, I've experienced it. Now I'm like ready for the next journey. And I think that's like one of those things in this hobby that people think you're just like a flipper if you just like sell most of the things you get because they don't on like they like having it and experiencing it but like i like the process of getting it like i don't get I asked it. i don't get asked uh, i do occasionally but i i don't get asked what it was like selling a first edition charizard i get asked how was it when you pulled it i don't i, yeah. I don't get asked how was selling a, or trading a, a a trophy pikachu i get asked how was dubai how was how was the experience yeah. that's that's what matters that's what that's what this is all about that's what you look back on you don't look at back at that that number that that end result you look at how you got there the pro yeah like you know which is interesting because I, oh, oh, I just ahead. think it's interesting like the three of us like i'm also very into the process of it all so i just find it interesting like that we're all also we're all we're all interested in the same thing we're all happen to all be on this podcast now that like 
because I would say like a majority of people probably aren't interested in the process of finding a car, grading it, and, and seeing it off to a new like a new owner. Because I I think yeah, a lot like, of people I can give you an example of it. Like, have you guys seen the Growlithe with the magic back that's on Heritage right yeah. now? Oh, I don't own that. The person that owns it now is like a friend of mine that is selling it, but you, I sold it to him. You sold it to him, okay? And that that process to me of the whole story of that is one of my like favorite journeys in pokemon i was at gen con i had heard of these cards like briefly before from tca gaming's video on youtube and was walking around gen con with now my wife but at the time just girlfriend and walked by a magic booth that had a growlith in it and i was like why would a magic booth have a growlith in it and i was just like can i see that card and he's like oh yeah you'll like this and flipped it over and i'm like no freaking way like what are the odds when there's only 10 of these that one of these is right in front of me so we like negotiated a price and i bought it and i was like happy with it and i enjoyed that card i took it to regionals like when i when we would vend and put it in the case and let people like take it out and view it and share the story with them and like got that interaction and i did that for like multiple events and that to me was like so cool because so many people like took pictures with the card and like because they had never gotten to experience that like i was providing these people an experience now which mm -hmm. also provided me one but there was also like a point then when I, I had done it, right? Like that was the end. And there was this other person that came along and gave me a great offer for the card that also wanted an experience with it. And so I, you know, and they were a friend, so I sold it to them and then they got a, a journey with it. And now they're ready to move on to the next. Like that is part of it. And that like, that to me is one of my favorite Pokemon moments. And most people yeah. look at that and they're like, well, if you love the card so much, why would you sell it? And it's yeah. like, because it, it wasn't the card. It was the, the journey of mm -hmm. the card. And like, that to me is like such a big part of the hobby that I think, I think for some people it just doesn't matter. And for others, it's everything. And, and yeah. that's like, kind of goes back, you know, if we want to really well round this, it goes back to that whole, like, walk in other people's shoes a little bit. And even if you don't agree, try to understand them, you know? And like, mm -hmm. if you can understand why that card was as great to me as it was, but why I was able to sell it, it's because it was the journey. And that may not be the same for someone else that just wants to own it. And if they don't own it, then it's, you know, all for naught. So what like a great conversation we just had. Yeah, dude, this awesome. has been a, this is yeah, see, and this is what we meant by <laughs> you'll get better quality content if we're like raring to go versus if we feel like we have to force it. Yeah. And we had like no we had, we, we, week, yeah, and we had no plan for this. It, like we like, wanted to talk yeah, to each went, other. This and went like to a great place. Up. This went to a great place. I'm very happy with where this went. It's very wholesome. Yeah. yeah. A wholesome conversation about, yeah. you know, being happy with yourself and the process. Like my and... shirt. Somebody comment on how cool my shirt is. Doritos. I like my shirt. Well, it's not. I like Cool Ranch. Uh, it says Dodrios, not the, Doritos. Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> Dodrio. Is it backwards on your screen? No. It is. It's backwards for me. It's backwards for all the viewers. Oh, sorry guys. Wait, hold on. Oh, is he gonna flip me? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. How do I do this? Transform, flip, horizontal, boom. Yeah, this whole time nobody knew what your shirt. Go trios, guys. <laughs> for anyone that uh, I'll pin the comment for the first person that uh, read it or has it commented in the, uh, you know what I mean. I don't know what I'm talking about whatever engagement rate go yeah just <laughs> just like comment I'm, i'll forget i won't actually pin your comment i might oh yeah it's supposed to leave that part in. <laughs> wow hey yeah hey, you need to yeah. edit that out yeah all right you, radar needs to go back to the youtube studying board because <laughs> clearly he lost that lesson <laughs> so yeah, we had this pretty that, progressive uh, chat bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye <laughs>